What's up, Trade Hackers? Welcome to this week's video update. Time of this recording is Saturday morning, August 15th. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. Uh, I'm excited to get back into the swing of day trading next week. Starting on Monday, we'll be live in the live stream room. Uh, so you, it, when you log in, just click this live stream room here, and that will take you here. And so this is where we will be streaming live on Monday. We'll be doing that every day next week. So looking forward to that. Been traveling this week, so didn't uh, wasn't able to stream. Snuck in a few day trades, which I'll I'll share with you here shortly. But to start with, let's just go over the trade alerts for the week, starting with Monday the 10th. So our first trade was a rolling adjusting trade in John Deere, DE. So we just rolled this out to extend duration. Price kind of got got a ways out of range with very little chance of getting back. So we went ahead and rolled that out to September. Price is hanging out right here, right inside the range, pretty close to where we rolled it. And so just waiting for some downside action to benefit that. Next trade was an opening trade in IWM. So we added a new bunker, some new downside protection with this rally that we've seen. We've been very patient with adding short delta, which, is, which has been a good benefit. Uh, now we're starting to put it back on. And so, um, so that's what we did here. We did this one with 102 days to expiration. And so let's take a look at IWM. So we've got a couple different positions on here in IWM. Let's just start with the bunker which is this one here. So pretty close to where we put it on. Again, we just, we need it. We like, we want to see a down, a big side down, uh, a big downside move to benefit that. We've also got some other short delta plays in here, which is just a couple of vertical spreads. Uh, this one here, price is hanging out just inside the range. And then this one here, both of these are in the September cycle. Uh, and this one is, you know, up about 128 bucks since the roll. So again, just looking for some downside movement to benefit those. If we take a look at the charts, we can just go to a three month, uh, three month daily. Let's go to the, get off the flexible grid, go to a three month daily. There we go. All right, so, so you can see we've just been on this massive rally uh, here over the last couple weeks. Now it's starting to flatten out and come down to the downside. If we look at the S&P during that same period, it's a little bit stronger you know, it's continuing to just kind of, well, we had a big push higher and then that now it's just kind of grinding sideways to higher. So, and, and then the NASDAQ is actually uh, been a little bit more of the weaker one, finally, where we're getting a little bit more two-sided action in the NASDAQ. So, I'll be interested to see how this plays out, if we can actually get a little bit of a rollover to the downside and really kind of kick in a little bit more volatility. You know, uh, you can see that implied volatility has really been contracting over the last couple of weeks. Had that little spike here in the NASDAQ and then really just contracting. Uh, same thing in, in the S&P, uh, except it's just really just been grinding lower as far as the implied volatility goes. And so, but still, I mean, you know, still at the 53 percentile on the SPX. So not... It's not look, uh, you know, this market's not ready to lay flat and just grind higher yet. You know, there's still a little bit of uncertainty out there, as you can imagine, with everything going on. Uh, so we'll see what happens. I, I, you know, I think we're, I think, I don't, you know, I don't think we're going to, I'm not looking for a market crash, uh, but I, but I'm also, you know, not looking for this thing just to rip higher. I, I think we do kind of start to trade sideways here. I think we are a little overextended to the upside. So my bias would definitely be to the downside a little bit, but uh, but um, I, I'm, but more likely we'll see just some kind of two-sided choppy action, which will be good for uh, good for our position. So that's what we're looking for. Uh, let's go back to the alerts, starting with uh, Disney. So we had a an earnings iron duck in Disney. We this thing was way up the beak, so we just went ahead and let it expire. Uh, so we booked 13 bucks per contract, did four contracts. Uh, so that's what we booked, just the big profit on that one. Next trade was Beyond. We did a earnings trade on this also. It was in a reverse iron duck and a very similar situation happened after earnings. Price went down. So we went ahead and just let this expire in the beak. We we're trying to get filled to get out at somewhere around a dollar or so, uh, just couldn't get filled, so went ahead and just let this expire, booked $19 per contract, so we did three on that one. 
So a nice little beak profit there. Next trade, DIA. So we went ahead and rolled this out. This is one of our sets of short call verticals that were originally iron condor. So we've just kept them for that short delta exposure. And, and by the way, our short delta exposure, we're right at about two to one on our ratio of short delta beta weighted to SPY versus our theta. So uh, we're in a good position here to get a little bit of downside action in the market, uh, but won't get killed if this thing continues higher as well. So that's the that's where we're positioned in our overall portfolio. If we take a look at DIA, so we've got two of these short call verticals, uh, both of which are in September. This one price is just outside the range, and then this one price just inside the range. So again, just looking for some short side to benefit those. <clears throat> Rolling adjusting trade in IWM, I already showed you those vertical spreads, but this is one of the long put verticals we just rolled out from August to September. QQQ added a bunker in the Qs as well, so same same cycle as uh, uh, IWM. This one with 101 days expiration, so if we take a look at the Qs, uh, very similar. We've got a couple different uh, short call verticals here, uh, one of which is still in August. So this is the one uh, still in August. You can see price is just outside the range there. And then this one is in September, just outside the range there. And then this is the bunker that we just added. So looking for some downside action in the queues. Next trade, closing trade. So we had another bunker on in the queues, and this one was getting close to that 60 days to expiration where we want to be out of the trade, where the P&L starts to kind of sag into that valley. So we just went ahead and closed that one out and then, like I said, added this bunker here. So that's what we did there. Uh, opening trade in SPX. So we added a weekly double calendar. This one we did with three to, uh, three days in the front week, six days in the back. So we had, uh, we had two at this point. And so just like we've been doing over the last couple months, we've just taken one off on Thursday, taken one off on Friday. So I'll get to those closing trades here in just a moment. Uh, opening trade in SPY, so we added a duck in SPY, did this one with 21 days to expiration. So we've got several things going on in SPY. So we had uh, we had another one that expired, but that I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, this is one that we've also been, been trying to get filled on. Now we this expires on 818, so early next week, uh, but we've actually been trying to get out of this all week. We just have not been able to get filled. Uh, so we've got a big profit, right? It's $128 profit, so nothing nothing great, but profit's a profit. We get that no risk to the upside. And so we've been just, and, and it's been up far up the beak for, for you know, all week, and we've been trying to get filled for a dollar just to book that big profit, but not getting filled, so we're just holding it. We don't, we don't necessarily, we're not looking for the capital, capital to redeploy, but if you needed to free up that capital, you would just pay up a few cents. So you might pay a dollar two, dollar three. Actually, I think we were trying to get filled at a dollar two, still didn't get filled. So we just let it, uh, so we'll just wait till next week. Try again. If we don't get filled, we'll just let it expire and, and book that big profit. So uh, that is the plan there. We've also got a short call vertical left from an iron condor in August that uh, we need to come back in a range. Now we've got, how much time do we have in August? We'll take this off next week. So we've only got six days left in August, right? So, so that's the plan. We'll we'll take that off uh, if we don't. And if obviously if we get a quick down move, that'll benefit. If not, we'll just close it out. We don't need any more short delta, so I'm not going to continue to roll that one like we are the Qs and the DIA. Uh, so we'll probably just close that piece. The other thing that we have in SPY, let me bring that up a little bit, is we've got another duck. And this one uh, expires 827. So you can see prices hanging out right here. Uh, if we look at the expiration, let's put our calendar on the expiration date uh, on the 27th. And, and then if we put our price slice right here, you can see we've still got a 30% chance that price could come back into the duck head. So we're not looking to take this one off early. It's only when price runs up and we have a very little chance of getting back to that duck head that we'll take it off early. So that's that one. And then we also have this one, which uh, we just put on uh, this week. So this expires 9-3. And so again, still a, still a pretty good chance this 
this could come down into the duck head, so not doing anything there. And then lastly in SPY, we have another iron condor, which is uh, with an expiration of 919, and we're looking to book 30 to 40% of max profit here, so just waiting for some more time to pass on that trade. Next trade, expiration trade in SPY. So this was the uh, SPY iron deck that we just went ahead and let expire. Booked a beak profit of $18 per contract. Had six contracts. So that's what we went, that's what we booked there. SMH did a rolling adjusting trade in SMH. So this one, we actually got assigned on our short calls. And remember, we talk about this in our uh, option assignment mini course, and uh, you know, I think I've I didn't get a lot of questions on this. So either not too many people are in this trade, or uh, uh, they they are starting to under you guys are starting to understand uh, getting assigned, and then it's not that big of a deal. So we got assigned on our calls because we, we are inverted, so our calls were in the money. We got assigned on our two calls, so we got two hundred short shares. Oops, two hundred short shares of SMH stock. And so what happened the next morning when I woke up and noticed this was a case? Well, all we did was we covered our calls, or in this case, our 200 short shares, bought that back for $172.16. And then we sold two new calls at the 180 strike, which is about the 30 delta, and sold those for 310. And so we, and then we kept our puts the same. So we've got the 180 calls and the 153 puts. So when you get assigned, again, it's it's not that scary. You, your risk does not change. So instead of having two short calls, we just had 200 short shares of stock. And we still had the puts. So nothing changed except for our buying power. And you know we didn't we didn't want to hold the stock, so we went ahead and just covered that and then resold new calls. And so that's where we're at here. So if you take a look at this, it, it will look a little funky to you because we got rid of those shares. So it shows that we're up, you know, almost $800, uh, but that's because primarily the puts, right, that we kept on. They were, they were as price was moving higher, they're gaining, you're, you're benefiting from that, and so that's where that, that gain is coming from. So nothing's really changed. And once we get down to around 21 days to expiration, we'll just roll this out to the next cycle and continue to uh, try to manage our way back to profits in SMH. Next trade, closing trade in SPX. So this is the one we closed on Thursday. So we booked a small profit on this trade. It was it was kind of nearing our our break even. We we're up just a little bit. Uh, you know, we want to take one off on Thursday, one off on Friday. So we have to just take this one off, book the profit. So we didn't run the risk of if we had a big gap up the next day. You know, taking a taking a sizable loss. So we we closed that out for a for a nice little small profit. And then uh, we also opened a new weekly double calendar in SPX, so let's take a look at that. So that's hanging out pretty close to the middle, right where we put it on. So nothing to do there except for wait till next week, and we'll take that one off on Thursday or Friday. And keep in mind, I mean, these, you know, we've gotten these, this, the last couple of weeks, we've gotten, we've gotten some small profits, but, but not like before on these trades, but remember, the reason why? Look what this market has done. It's done nothing but grind up. What happens when market grinds up? Vol contracts, right? We got one little down day that kind of kind of helped for a little bit, but then right back to it. So you get in a situation like that, these weekly double calendars are not going to perform that well. You know, you get into a situation like this with some nice two-sided action, that's when you're going to see some benefit here. Or, or even like this. I mean, that's that's a great, you know, made some nice profits in, in something like that. But these these grinds are tough, and the fact that we we're still able to squeak out a profit, uh, that's 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 a good thing. So we put that one on, and then there, our next one that we closed on Friday, and this one, man, we really had a contraction in applied volatility. We were, price was actually pretty centered in our spread, but the vol just contracted and took that away. So we took off, put, took that off for a, uh, a small loss. And that's it. So those are the alerts. Let's take a look at some of the other positions, starting with ES, another short delta piece. We've got a, uh, a long put vertical there, price just outside range. And we've got one there just inside the range, so holding that for some short delta. We've also got these two positions on in gold, one of which is a full iron condor. You can see price is hanging out in the lower end of the range of that. 
And then we've got a short call vertical from our previous iron condor. So we price ran way up here. So we closed out the put vertical side and price has come all the way back into range. You know, we did get some questions about this in the community about, hey, you know, price is way out of range. What do we do? Uh, you know, should we close it out? You know, because it looks like it's going to be a full loser. And the answer is always no. We, we're not going to change up our, our methodology just because price makes an extended move one way. We're going we're gonna to manage it just like we teach in the class, which is let the probabilities play out. And, and that's what's happening with gold. Now, that doesn't mean it can't turn reverse and rip back higher, and, and that, that's what happens. But, you know, if we would have taken it off way out here, we would have taken a sizable loss, but prices come all the way back into range. And, you know, this is what has, has happened in gold. It had a massive move higher, and it just dropped like a rock. Now it's just kind of trading sideways. So that is the plan, and that's why we like to, you know, close out the untested side and then add a new full... Iron Condor centered around price. Now, if, how, do we wish we would have waited till it came back down? Yeah, maybe, but we'll see how it plays out. I mean, we could we could end up booking profits on both of these. You know, we could uh, you know price could run lower, and we could you know book a profit on that one. And then on this one, if price runs lower, you know we're it's going to breach that break even. So maybe we have to close out the untested side here, which would be the call vertical side, and then price could bounce back up. So. We're just trying to let price ping pong around and, uh, and you know, widen our ranges by adding and, and then taking them off when we can book profits. So that's the plan in gold. Natty Gas, uh, a couple big moves up in Natty Gas. If we look at the chart, uh, you know, that's a big, big, sizable move. That's a big, sizable move last week. And so if we take a look, price is hanging out in the upper end of our adjusted strangle. So just uh, hoping for a little bit of downside action. If not, we'll roll the puts up. We've got plenty of time here. We've got 41 days to expiration in our current cycle. Bonds, we've got this uh, adjusted strangle in bonds. Price is hanging out inside of our range here. We're up 370 since we did this roll. Uh, but again, we've got plenty of time here, 41 days in bonds as well. And just waiting for some more time to pass on that. Apple, we've got a long put vertical price is just outside the range, looking for a little downside action to get back in there. I mentioned D, I mentioned IWM, I mentioned Q, SMH, SBX, SPY, XBI. So we've got this, uh, which was a short strangle, it's a short straddle now. We're up about 570 some dollars since we've done this roll. And again, this is already out in September. We've got 34 days. Not looking to do anything but just let theta decay here for us. And then lastly, XLK. So this is another short delta piece just outside the range, looking for some downside action to get back in. So those are all the trades. Those are all the alerts. Let's go to our day trading and check out how the week went. Again, very limited amount of trade. We had our first live stream day on Monday. Uh, took six different trades. Staying super small, I was just trying to get accommodated with, uh, you know, trading and live streaming at the same time. Ended up basically a scratch day, lost 18 bucks. Was hoping to come out of the gate hot for everybody, uh, but hopefully everybody was still just paper trading anyway. Remember, 100 paper trades before you risk real money. Please adhere to that because it will save you a lot of losses. And then uh, traveling uh, in meetings and different things the rest of the week. So uh, I did on the 13th, so this was Thursday, I uh, was able to sneak in a few mighty 90s and so booked a nice little $461 profit that day. And then Friday, I did have some time in the morning. So I put on a few pairs trades, which were nice. Gold and silver made 700 bucks on that gold silver pairs trade. The Russell NASDAQ micro pairs trade, about 180 plus on that one. And then a uh, tiny loss on the notes versus bonds pairs trade. And then four mighty 90s, all winners, just tiny little winners. Uh, they kind of went against me initially and then came back and I was able to get out for a small profit on, uh, on, on those. So looking forward to Monday, getting back into the swing at my battle station for the day trading, we'll be live streaming again. To get there, just go to that live stream room and we will be there. I'll, uh, you know, market opens 8.30 a.m. Central Time, so my time, 
and uh, I'll be in there 15, 30 minutes before then to uh, answer questions and get everybody up to speed before we start. So I hope, uh, hope that helps. Everybody have a great weekend, and we will talk to you Monday. See ya.